welcome to the hot seat. Um, so, lovely ladies, what we're going to do is we're going to be playing past the microphone. Yep. It's super easy. Um, I'd love you to tell us, both of you to tell us a little bit about who you are, what your role is where you work and what you're most passionate about in your work. Well, first of all, I'll just explain to you what our business is. So, um, Emma and I are accountants. Um, and we work for a firm, um, Josh Sutherland, who specialise in corporate reconstruction and, and also uh, personal bankruptcy. So I guess um, we're the type of people that you don't want to know in a um, professional sense. <laughs> uh, but the realities are there are businesses out there and there are um, people out there that face financial hardship, yes. uh, in particular small business owners. And our firm provides services and advice to those people to help them navigate, I guess the best way forward for them. Um, I've been with the firm 12 years, so I'm a chartered accountant. I went to Newcastle Uni. Um, <laughs> uh, I grew up in Curry, so not too far from here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, in terms of what I'm passionate about, I guess it's helping people because Emma and I were actually talking about this yesterday. Um, quite often we have people come into our boardroom and they have tried to save their business and they've tried to get themselves back on track personally um, and they haven't been able to do it for a number of reasons and they're stressed and their mental health has been exposed in a major way. Yes. Sometimes their relationship with their partner has broken down. Um, they've borrowed money from people and haven't been able to pay it back and they sit with us and we give them some advice and then they see a way forward and, and if they go ahead and appoint us to help them out formally, um, there's instantly a weight lifted off their shoulders and, and they don't believe me when I say to them, look, just hand it over to me and I'll deal with it. Move away. Your mental health is more important. Your family are more important. Um, but that's actually what happens. It, it really does. Like, people hand their mess over to us. We clean it up as best we can and then they can go back to, I guess, improving their own personal position, their own mental health and um, reconnecting with family that they perhaps have had a strained relationship with. Yeah. Okay, so I guess my background is similar to Tina's but different in that I'm not a local, um, which my accent gives away. Um, I graduated with Welcome a... Welcome home. <laughs> I graduated <laughs> with a maths degree and was leaving uni. All of my friends were going to London in the UK to work for big accountancy firms. I did not want to do that. I grew up regionally. I wanted to go home and was Google searching under immense pressure from my mum to say, you've got to get a job, you're graduating in six weeks and you've not done anything, to try and find a job to do. And an insolvency job just popped up and I thought, you know, good as any, why not? That was 15 years ago. Um, and I guess my journey here, I'm married to an Aussie. He grew up in the UK and we got to this point in life where you think, if we don't go now, we're never going to go. Something else is going to happen. So about eight years ago, we quit jobs, sold the house, packed the contents of the house into a container and shipped it across the sea. Um, thankfully, everything made it bar the glass in one photograph frame, um, which was impressive when you think it was all boxed in, in the container for 12 weeks. I guess in terms of my role within Josh Sutherland, I'm actually a registered liquidator, so I can take appointments in my own name as well as managing files on behalf of the other partners and appointees in our firm. And just mirroring really what Tina said, um, we do a lot of work in the SME space, a lot of small business owners, and there is a legal distinction between a company and an individual, but in a director's head, that just isn't there. It's their business and them, and their business are one and the same thing, and trying to make people realise that insolvency is unfortunately a part of business in the same way every other part of business is there with tax and GST and those things, and sometimes through no fault of people's own, that's just what happens. And it's about offering people a solution to that and making them realise that the fact that you know the business may not have worked may not be a bad reflection on them. Sometimes things just happen outside of people's control and it's really just stressing to people that because this has happened, they're not a crook or a criminal, yes. they're not going to lose their house necessarily. You know, If someone has to go bankrupt, that does not mean that someone's going to come and take their TV and their fridge freezer and their sofa away. And it's trying to bust a lot of those myths for people that make people realise that it's a solution, it's an outcome, and life goes on. And it's been expressed really well to us by someone we work with that in these financial stress situations, people get caught up in it, but ultimately it's just numbers on the page. There are more important things than that. Your family life, your relationships, your mental health, your physical health, all of these things can suffer. 
and numbers and finances and it's obviously is just numbers on a page and it's really not what's important and something that we try very much to reflect in our dealings with people that you know you, you can move past it and there's definite ways to do that. Wow, you both explained <laughs> that in a way that, you know, is easy to understand. And obviously I'm an accountant as well, so you're speaking my language. And I think with the year that we've had where there's been a lot of small businesses that have been placed under distress, um, I think the reality of getting into financial difficulty all of a sudden has been pushed upon people. So not only are you the professional advisor, but essentially there's a counselling element into what you're doing and helping people walk through that and I think one of the things I see a lot of people struggle with they feel that it's a stigma so what are your thoughts to and, and advice to people that may be here or that are listening that might be in financial financial difficulty on how they can kind of get past that limiting belief and get the help that's a long-winded question yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so I actually have a first aid certificate in mental health. So our wow. firm actually invested in everybody at a um, senior level doing that. Amazing. It was 2019, I think. Yeah. Um, look, I think my advice in relation to your very long-winded question would be to, to see somebody in yeah. our area, whether it's our firm or another firm. There's, there's quite a few firms that do what we do in Newcastle. Um, and get some answers because it is a very complex area of accounting what we do and there's a lot of laws uh, and rules and regulations that govern what we do and it's not something that people um, come across um, regularly um, and it's not something people talk about at a barbecue either like you're not going to go to a barbecue no. and say yeah. oh how's business like people aren't going to own up to the fact that their business is failing like they don't want to own up to that. So um, in the first instance, most people will seek guidance from a, an accountant or their lawyer and then we're normally referred, um, the, the, they're, they're normally referred to our office. So we have um, the ability to meet with people for free. Um, so obligation, no charge uh, meeting. And we can give them some answers um, which then may help them, I guess, in their mind navigate what they're next step is moving forward. I guess just one thing to add on that as well is people in business have choices to make and you can come to that kind of fork in the road and go, okay, we know that the business isn't doing great at this point. I don't know what the options are. And it's really about being in a position to make informed choices and having spoken to someone and understanding what your options are, what the implications on each of those are. And I guess using an example from small business owners, we often see people who come to us and who go, I've drawn all my money out of my super and put it into the business. I've remortgaged the house and put the equity into the business. I've given the bank security over the family home. And that's fine if that's what you want to do, but know what your options are before you go down that path and make an informed choice if that's what you want to do. But know that sometimes there are other options and sometimes they can be better options for you that because you're in that situation and you're living and breathing it, you don't know those other options and you need that specialist advice. And that external set of eyes, we're all guilty of it. You get so caught up in it that you need someone who's a step removed and who does this every day to look at the situation and hopefully give you a, a different perspective and an understanding of what all the options are for you. Great advice. Um, I guess I'd love to ask you, what are some tips that you would give small business owners that might be thinking <laughs> that they might be heading into difficulty? What are, say, one or two or three things that they could do immediately to start to navigate out of that road? I guess the big thing and one of the big things is, you know, be aware of personal implications. As I think I mentioned earlier, you know, there's not always that distinction between individuals and businesses um, for small companies. Be aware of what's out there. Be mindful of the potential personal pitfalls for you. Take early advice. At least then, as I said, you can make informed decisions and you're going into things hopefully with your eyes more open. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I really don't have anything more to add. Let's talk about something fun. <laughs> well, it is fun. What's the one thing that you love most about what you do? <laughs> anyone, anyone. <laughs> okay, um, that's actually a really hard question when you're a liquidator because two things. One, no one wants to know you, and if they do know you and have met you professionally, they don't want to admit that they have. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. The other thing is... I have yet in my 15-year career to meet anyone who set out to be a liquidator. 
correct me yeah, if you have. No, no, um, no. It's definitely not the kind of job that when you ask your five-year-old what do you want to be when they grow up, they're not going to turn around and say, Mummy, I want to be a liquid ice man. If you ever have a five-year-old like that, let us know. Um, but it's just not one of those careers. But it doesn't mean that it can't be immensely rewarding in a different sense that, you know, very different to most other <coughs> jobs. But I guess from a personal perspective, and I guess tying in with the theme of women in business, when I joined my first firm in the UK, they had never hired a female in a professional role in any of their insolvency teams. What year was that? 2005. Ooh. All male teams. Um, female secretarial and admin support, I was the first girl they had hired. Go girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it was only when I was thinking about this um, over the last few days that I realised that. And I guess rewarding from a career and non-career point of view is the insolvency industry is, in, similar to what Vaini was saying at the beginning, it's a boys club. It's the same as the legal profession. And I guess having got to the point now personally where I have my registration, it's really being able to say to our younger female staff, you can do that. There is nothing to stop you from doing that. You know, you can break through that glass ceiling if that's what you want. I didn't have that when I was coming through the ranks. It was all male. It was all older guys. It just wasn't there. And it's really nice to be able to think that hopefully having the two of us in a senior role within our firm actually can make a difference for some of our junior female staff to go, do you know what? I can achieve what I want to achieve if I need to. Whew, that just yeah. adds up. Uh, and I guess just adding to what you've just said, I guess the thing that I uh, enjoy most is mentoring staff. You know, I started at a very junior level and I worked my way up um, the, I guess, the hierarchy. Um, and I did part-time uni while working full-time and I did postgraduate study and I, you know, I'm a mum, I have two children, so I've navigated that. And I really do enjoy, I guess, sharing my experiences moving up the ranks with others and supporting them from an educational perspective but also from a personal perspective and giving them advice uh, along the way to help them, I guess, navigate any challenges that they may face, um, including those that they're, that they're facing that I've faced along the way. So that is something I really enjoy. I enjoy mentoring people and helping them through, I guess, the ranks. And I support people to move on as well. Whilst we like to keep our staff um, because we invest time in training them, um, if people feel that what we do isn't for them, then I'm all about supporting them to move into a different area of accounting or completely change their career altogether. So I think it's important that you can be that person for somebody and they don't feel like if they want to move on that they can't talk to anybody about it. We have an open door policy in our office uh, and we definitely are supportive of anybody that I guess makes that decision. Love it. Thank you both so much. Thank you so much for your generosity in supporting the event today. And I uh, can't wait to hear more stories. <laughs>